Hey, what's up guys, welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, we're talking about framing nailers. Framing nailers have come a long way. You know, they were first uh, pneumatic, then I think even at one point they were like electric uh, powered ones, I think, maybe like one or two. And then they were in gas, and now they're battery powered. So we're gonna be talking about battery powered framing nailers, specific, specifically this one right here, the 21 degrees plastic collated brush this framing nailer from DeWalt. Uh, we've had this one for quite a bit, maybe about two or three years. Um, we don't use it every day, but we've used it for quite a bit. But we're gonna talk about this one top to bottom. Stick with us. All right guys, like we mentioned earlier, this right here is DeWalt's 21 degrees plastic collated full round headed framing nailer. Model number on this one I believe is DCN21PL, okay? This one is the second framing nailer that we've had from DeWalt. The first one that we had is right here. So this one right here is a DeWalt DCN690, uh, okay? We put, I don't mind how many countless uh, boxes of nails you put through this one, but eventually this one just stopped working. We sent in for warranty work at least like two or three times. They fixed it and it comes around. It puts through a couple more boxes of nails, right? And then it just stops working again. So let me show you what I mean by it stops working again, right? So it'll spin up, here we go. Nothing. Nothing. So, let me just put this one down here real quick. So that's what I mean. Um, and I believe that one and this one work generally the same way. There's, you know, two types of cordless uh, framing nailers that currently exist in the market right now. Uh, the one type is the one that uses a flywheel, right? The ones like the Walt, I think they're the only ones who kind of do that. Then there's like the compressed air or nitrogen or whatever you want to call it. Uh, canister ones uh, that kind of, you know, compress a cylinder of, of air and then shoots it right back down. I believe Hitachi, Milwaukee, and maybe a few other people may make those, but DeWalt uses the flywheel design, okay? So, um, like I mentioned, we've put, you know, tons of boxes of nails through this. Uh, let's go over the marketing hype before we bring you in closer and take a better look at it. So this right here is DeWalt's 20 volt max brushless XR 21 degrees cordless plastic collated framing nailer. It features dual uh, speed motor to optimize wide range of uh, fastening capabilities. It will fasten up to three and a quarter inch fasteners, tool free uh, selector switch, tool free uh, depth adjustment, high strength aluminum steel magazine, stall release lever, adjustable rafter hook, easy to access nose piece for removing jam nails, dry fire lockout, 21 degrees magazines, holds up to 49 plastic collated nails. We're gonna talk about that in a second. It's capable of driving a 0 0.0148 inch diameter nails into dense lumber. It's designed for you know residential framing, punch out work, setting trusses, fence building, deck building, sheathing, all kinds of fun stuff. Anyways, it's backed by your three year limited warranty, one year service free, uh, 90 day satisfaction guaranteed. All right, so let's go over this stuff here real quick. Uh, first thing I'm gonna go ahead and tell you is it does come with a Nomar tip. Uh, this already been you know, two or three years since we've had this. So we've already lost that. We don't really know where that is. Uh, it's, I don't think we've ever really had to use it since it's a framing nailer. I'm assuming if you probably use it, you know, on delicate surfaces and stuff like that, you could probably need it, but we've never used it and we've already lost it. So uh, there's this little plastic piece that goes and cover up some of these teeth, but you know, let's go ahead and say we don't have that already, okay? So this right here is what they call the high strength uh, magazine, aluminum magazine. They do point out this high strength and not just stand up aluminum because you know, aluminum just isn't necessarily associated with high strength. Uh, the main reason for aluminum is to make it, you know, lightweight and durable at the same time. If you made it plastic, it would, you know, obviously uh, get damaged with nails going in and out and then it wouldn't slide easily and all that kind of fun stuff and warp, right? So uh, this is aluminum. It does have, um, you know, kind of the pull back twice type lever system. So this is a tensioning mechanism that, you know, forces the nails or pushes the nails towards the uh, firing head. And the way that it works is, you know, you pull it back once and then it stays back. You drop the nails in from the top. Let's see if I can show you real quick. Take these uh, round headed nails, plastic collated, drop them in and then you pull this back once and then it goes forward, right? You do it again, comes back out, right? So we can go ahead and take this out for now. Uh, but that's how that really works. It is top loading, okay? And one thing that you'll probably see all the time uh, when we're um, uh, using it, one thing you'll notice is that every time you pull this back and try to load new nails in, the one nail that is ready right here will almost always fall out, right? I'm not sure if it's gonna show, oh, there it goes. So see how this nail, and it gets really annoying. Um, 
there's always one nail uh, that's always right here. And whenever you go back to load it or reload it, it always falls out. You'll see it as we go through some of the clips of actually using it, right? Um, but that actually gets you know a little bit annoying. Um, not annoying enough to not use it, but that's how that really works here, okay? Um, so speaking of nail clips, so this nail clip I believe is about 25. Uh, this one, this one's from the wall. Uh, a lot of them, you know, generally have somewhere similar, close to the same number of nails. But the DeWalt branded one, this is the three inch uh, framing uh, nails, ACQ coated, but not, sh still shouldn't be using pressure treated lumber. 25 nails, this magazine holds 49. All right, so just think about that and tell me what you think is wrong with that. The thing that's wrong with that right now is even the DeWalt branded ones, right, are 25, if this magazine holds 49, you can really only fit one strip of nails in there, right? Cause you know, 25 plus 25 equals what? 50, so you can't fit a secondary strip of nails in there, right? It just doesn't work, right? The way to make this work is you would have to go ahead and tear off maybe two uh, nails, nails off of each strip to do that in order to load two strips of nails in there. That is, I would call a significant design flaw because you know, if you're moving fast, who's gonna have time to, you know, pick up a strip of nails, rip off two pieces, and then put it in, it just doesn't make sense. You could, you know, get the box of nails and just cut off two from every one, but now, then you're gonna be loading in, let's say, I don't know what, 48, no, uh, 48 or 46 or whatever it is um, on here each time, and that's just more time consuming stuff like that. So, uh, that's just the problem that I noticed. Um, it isn't like a really strange problem. They could've just fixed that by either making this hold, you know, one or two more, um, or, you know, just putting one or two less uh, nails on each strip. So even some of the grip right ones um, and other branded ones, I noticed will still do that. So it doesn't really hold two strips. Um, you could argue they kind of made it more compact so it fits in the tighter places and stuff like that. But the part that really matters here is between this and here. Will it fit between stud base? Yes. Problem between this and here, it will fit between stud base. But this nail clip, yes, it will sometimes get in the way if it's too long, but just did want to point that out because it gets really annoying when you're trying to move really fast. And because you can only fit one strip of nails in here, what I usually find myself doing is just fire a few, like after you put a new one in, then grab another one and put it in, right? So usually you just end up grabbing two with one hand, right? Put one in, fire one or two, put another one in. It's just something that you have to work around. Seems just a little bit annoying where they could have easily fixed that, right? So the spring mechanism in here is obviously a little metal coil that's round up that makes us go back and forth. Haven't had any issues with that, okay? Uh, moving around to the back side here. Uh, this is where the Allen key or hex wrench is stored for this uh, magazine. If you did want to pull it apart and unjam some nails, no real problems there. On this handle part right here, there is a lockout mechanism. So if you press it in from this side, it is locked. You can't spin it, uh, no problem. Uh, this is the trigger. Obviously, it's not variable speed on a framing nailer. Nothing to worry about there. This right here is a 360 degrees rafter hook. I did actually find to work really well. Um, it is, you know, all plastic, so you you know, it hasn't broken off yet, but it does lock into, you know, semi-lock there, lock here and lock here. So it kind of locks here. So it's easy to kind of place on two by framing uh, lumber. It's real easy. Uh, doesn't, you can obviously get it out the way pretty quickly, okay? Of all this black stuff here is rubber over molded as you would expect. Um, and let's talk about this front part here. Hopefully it comes out well. But this front part here has two speeds, okay? So uh, if you move it over to power level one or mode one, as some people call it, um, it's suitable for driving up to two inch nails according to, let's say the manual, right? Um, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you, I rarely ever, if never uh, use it on power mode one. Um, even if we are using two inch uh, nails, we're still using it on uh, speed two because you know I don't think anybody would ever really use it on speed one. I don't even, even know if they make one and a half inch nails or one inch nails, but you probably could if you do that, but uh, we just don't really have any need to do that. So we're almost always using it on speed two. You can kind of put it in the middle, right? Where it's not all the way and it kind of gives it this weird feeling, but you know, it's really designed to be on speed one or speed two. Uh, anything that's over about two inches, you really should be on speed two, but I'm gonna go ahead and say, just always use it on speed two. There is a little light here for when it does stall out, it tells you to, you know, use a stall release lever. Um, every once in a while we roll, we'll, we'll, we will run into that. Uh, there is a mode selector switch here. So if you move it to this way, 
where there is uh, one nail showing, it means it's on single fire mode, which means you press it down, the flywheel ramps up, you pull the trigger, and then it fires, right? If you move it over to bump fire mode, as soon as you pull the trigger, uh, the flywheel will ramp up and it'll fire every time you press down, right? That's how that really works. Pretty standard stuff there, uh, nothing too, you know, interesting whatnot obviously 21 degrees front side here stall release lever uh, this part right here you will use the uh, allen key that's located back here to take this off and then you can kind of pull this magazine back art back apart and then you could pull the jam nails out um, it's it's light you still need the tool to kind of do that uh, but it doesn't jam too often the more frequent thing that happens with this is it just doesn't sink the nails as much uh, not as much jamming we've had a jam you know a couple of times uh, not enough times for us to stop using it but you know it does happen uh, this right here is a tool free depth adjustment guide you know you could spin it one direction or another direction if you did want to figure out how how much you did want it to sink right um, you can kind of tell here let me show you right here as i move it you see how this part here is you know, going up or down. If you want to sink more, you just set it more. If you want to sink less, you set it less. Generally, I found that we almost always set it to sink uh, heavy. Uh, the main reason for that is I'm going to go ahead and show you or tell you is that this nailer is not very consistent, okay? Um, every time you fire nails, I would say, I'm just going to guess here, a good eight out of 10 times, it'll mostly work, but it's been quite frequent frequent um, that it just doesn't sink the nails all the way. So for us, this nailer is always on maximum power mode, maximum sink settings, um, and it still does that. So it's just a little bit of a problem for us, uh, but just did want to point that out, okay? So let's go ahead and talk about some of the difference between that one and this one right here. So this one right here, is um, the DCN 690. This is the first one that we got, like we mentioned earlier. Uh, this one actually takes um, clipped framing nails. So this one here, we've been using pass load nails since we had a bunch of pass load nails that were from our pass load gun. Um, but it takes, uh, was it not plastic coated the uh, paper strip nails. Um, some people like one or the other, it doesn't really matter uh, to us. Obviously the uh, plastic collated ones take full headed ones, full head nails, and this one takes, you know, clip nails. There's some benefits to each one, uh, whatever you may be, we're just using with whatever we have on hand, right? Um, since we've had a bunch of these left, we're still kind of using that. The other benefit to the uh, uh, paper collated strip nails is that every time you're firing um, nails, you're not shooting off little bits and pieces of plastic from the plastic collated in all directions, right? So if you do a bunch of framing, you're gonna realize there's a bunch of these like plastic pieces everywhere. That's because it's coming from um, what's holding the nails. So there's not too much of a difference, right? Except besides, you know, this one takes nails in, you load them in from the back and it kind of uses this uh, thing back here that kind of holds it back here when you're using it, right? You can do that, kind of loads it in. Other than that, everything else is pretty much the same, okay? Um, just did want to point that out. But like I mentioned earlier, this one has, you know, had a lot of problems since we've used it. We've, you know, had to, this one is far less consistent. Um, it feels less powerful, even if it is the same amount of power, it just feels less powerful and it just doesn't seem to work as well, right? Um, like I mentioned, we already had warrantied uh, two or three times. This one here, single fire, bump fire mode. This one does not have two speed settings. And that's one of the reasons why whenever this started having problems right away, we picked up this other one because it said two speed. We thought that it would be more consistent consistent and driving nails better, but that was not obviously the case, okay? Um, with that being said, I will go ahead and point out one additional thing. Um, so right here, usually on gas powered ones or even pneumatic ones, every time you fire a nail, there's usually something coming out, right? Like either gas or air, or whatever it is. So um, if you're moving from pneumatic, when you're firing nails, there's gonna be nothing coming out from here. This head doesn't swivel because there's nothing that to happen there, right? Even if you're using gas, one it's gonna be like venting and stuff happening, not on this one. So this is pretty just plastic, doesn't really move. There's lights on here sometimes that go ahead and tell you that it's stalled right here. This one's right here. Um, but that's one thing I noticed, so that's something obviously convenient, right?
All right, so let's talk to you about some of the tests that we just did here. We, we fired 45 nails into framing lumber, starting with a full uh, strip of nails, okay? Um, and they're roughly about one inch apart. We did 45 with single fire and 45 with bump fire. Let's talk to you a little bit about that each, right? So the main reason behind that is we wanted to get through at least one whole clip of nails and then also uh, reload and see how that really goes. Uh, we're measuring right now um, the time it takes, the number of jams, the number that are sunk, and number that are proud, right? So let's go ahead and take a look at those numbers. On single fire mode, using these uh, three inch ACQ coated plastic collated framing nails, um, it left eight of them proud, uh, 37 of them sunk, and then zero jams. Uh, it took roughly about 107, 107.16 seconds to get that done. Um, so the way that we're saying proud is, you know, obviously it's something that didn't sink all the way, whether it's sub sunk or sunk flat or whatnot, we just called them sunk and zero jams, which is interesting because on frame, on single fire mode, you definitely seem to get less jams. I'm just going to tell you that from using this uh, tool for the last couple years. Uh, so on bump fire mode, we did also, you know, start with the uh, full uh, strip of nails. It got left nine proud, 36 sunk, and then one jam. Took roughly about 64.47 seconds. And as you saw, or hopefully you saw, um, in bump fire mode, it ran into one strange issue where it was going and then uh, the firing pin was nailing. It was still firing off, but none of the nails were getting hit or sunk, right? Or there was just no nails coming out. So we just kind of pulled it back, reset it, and let it go again. It started coming back away, uh, going back there again. So that wasted like 12 to 15 seconds, but it was still significantly faster than doing it the other way, right? So we did use a 4 amp hour battery to do that um, on something like this. It's probably not going to be as critical in terms of uh, battery amp bars, but did want to point that out, right? So remember each strip takes about 25 nails and we fired about 45 nails. So we're not sure how we're gonna do the total performance score here, but the most important thing to me on a framing nailer is number one, is it consistent? And number two, does it have no power? So we're gonna try to figure out how to rank that kind of stuff or whatnot. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, this one will do up to three and a quarter inch uh, nails. I will go ahead and tell you right now, Three and a quarter inch nails. This one does not sink all the way. I still wish we had some three and a quarter inch nails. If we don't have any, I'll see if I can find some, maybe probably get some clips or whatnot, but it just will not sink them all the way. Uh, the maximum size we've had the best luck with here is about three inches. Two inch nails will work also, just not as well, okay? Um, so uh, that's what's really going on here with that. So let's go ahead and close the video. What can we say about this tool? Uh, so this tool, we obviously bought this tool. This tool is not uh, sponsored or video is not sponsored. Nobody sent this to us, but it is a good tool. Would I go out and buy this tool again? Personally, not really, mainly because I feel like there are other uh, better options on the market, right? If you're only in the DeWalt platform and you need a framing nailer, yeah, you could probably get away with doing this as if you're not doing like super production work or whatnot and just going bam, 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 right? You could probably get away with it. Even if you are doing it, you could probably maybe get away with it. Um, but I would probably, if you're not stuck to the brand, like I said, uh, I would probably have other options out there. The best one I've had luck with so far is Motabo HPT or the Hitachi one, multi volt one. That one seems to be the most consistent, the most smooth and just better all around. Um, the biggest issues I have with this one is it's not always consistent, as you could say. Like the first few that you saw, you could blame it on a human error. We're going too fast, whatever. It's just not always consistent. And even in just general usage, it just doesn't seem um, that consistent as fast, right? And also, as you probably saw, every time we try to pull it back to load one in there, one nail always falls out. It's just something weird going on with this. It's just always been doing that, but that's what's really going on with it, okay? So, um, like I said, if you're in the Dewalt brand, you could probably go ahead and get it, get away with it. If you're not loaded to that brand or whatever, by any means, there's, like I said, probably better options, right? The Milwaukee one's okay too, but I'm just saying the Metabo HBT one, they just did something right with that. I don't know what it is. It just seems to work consistently the most and uh, doesn't have the least amount of, pro and has seems to have the least amount of problems. Like I mentioned, the first one that we had had a lot of problems. We've warranted it, serviced it multiple times. I'm assuming this one, if we use it enough times, it'll probably have the same type of problem. I'm sure you could probably replace some, I don't know, firing pins, springs, or whatever is causing it to do that, but ain't nobody got time for that, right? So, uh, the biggest downside to the flywheel design is obviously you have to let it ramp up before you fire it. The gun will let you fire the pin, or fire it without uh, having ramped up all the way. Okay, that, I don't know if it's a, you could call it a design flaw or whatnot, but it'll let you fire it without sinking the nail fully. Does that make sense? Um, so that is something you do have to watch out for, and that uh, is very big apparent in the numbers, right? Because it took about 107.16 uh, seconds 
to fire uh, in single fire mode 45 nails, whereas in bump fire mode it took about 64.47 seconds, even with the, let's say, 15 second delay of one having issues with the nail being in the slot to fire or whatnot, right? So there is that. Obviously, uh, this nailer weighs in at a whopping 8.59 pounds it, without a battery and nails. Once you put battery and nails in there, it does get a bit heavier. So obviously, you just have to figure that out. Um, I'm just here to give you numbers. Uh, we're gonna be, the main reason we're reviewing this nail is because obviously we've had it for two or three years and that's how it kind of works out so far. But we're also gonna be reviewing other nailers that we've currently had and used and see how they really stack up against each other. So, hope you guys stay tuned for some of this other stuff. Um, hope this video helped you guys out. Otherwise, have a great day and then we'll see you guys next time.